name is Erin Ursoy. We are currently protesting the subsidization of animal agriculture. Animal agriculture could arguably be one of the most destructive and disgusting industries in the world. They are constantly killing animals by the second. They are destroying our planet and they are killing people with zoonotic diseases and polluting our low-income communities. I've been vegan for about two years now, solely for the purpose of getting justice for everyone affected by animal agriculture. Animal agriculture is the leading cause of climate change, as according to a study by World Watch Institute, it has been producing 51% of the world's combined greenhouse gas emissions. So I am a climate justice activist and that is why I'm vegan for climate. I'm also vegan for the animals because animal agriculture kills trillions of animals by the second, counting the fish as well. And I'm also vegan for the people because animal agriculture has caused so many, so many epidemics and pandemics that are constantly killing people around the world. And COVID-19, for example, is a product of animal agriculture, which we would all be not in quarantine. We would never have to even wear masks if it weren't for animal agriculture. Animal agriculture continues to be funded by our government. Our federal government gives money for this abuse and this destruction to happen. And it just happens right under our noses. They're constantly giving billions of dollars every year to animal agriculture, funding its destruction, abuse, and negligence. They claim to be caring about us but clearly not enough to divest from one of the most destructive industries in the world. Family farmers, environmentalists, animal rights supporters, and free market libertarians all have one problem in common. One of the worst things to ever happen to the vegan movement is happening right now. Last year, we awarded mega farmers $12 billion in bailouts. It makes them not be able to fail. So no matter how many people we veganize, no matter how many plant-based companies that exist, no matter how well they're doing, animals aren't being saved because all this industry does is continue to oversupply and profit anyways because they're in Congress's ear to get these bailouts. Last fall, I too had a similar revelation. My name is Laura Reese. When I realized that my tax dollars were undermining my activism through bailouts and subsidies to animal agribusinesses, I was outraged. So I took my case to Capitol Hill through an organization called Lobbyists for Good. Here you see the Vice News coverage of a day of our lobbying. I've since joined forces with Connie, as have about a dozen other volunteers, and together we are building the Vegan Justice League. Angleton, 50 miles southwest of Houston, Texas. Houston is known for one of the largest animal exhibition and livestock show and rodeos in the country. In fact, the livestock show is even considered its signature event. But we're not here to take you to any rodeo. We're here to take you to one of the best farmed animal sanctuaries in the country. Welcome to Rowdy Girl Sanctuary. I'm Renee King Sonnen. Let's go for a ride. That's Rowdy Girl over there. And if you haven't figured it out yet, well, she is the boss. And that's Tommy. He's my husband. He's the sole reason this place even exists. Without him, there'd be no sanctuary. He keeps everything running around here. Oh, but by the way, he is a rancher. That's an ex-rancher. I bought this 96-acre ranch as a retirement investment until Renee stepped in. I fell in love with these cows. I started spending all of this time with them, and I started naming them all one by one. They were no longer a number to me. Oh, and she sings to them, too. When it became time for us to put all these babies in the red trailer and sell them for slaughter, I just couldn't do it. And we found ourselves in a massive standoff regarding the future of these cows. I started a crowdfunding campaign. I raised $36,000 in less than four months, and I bought my husband's cows, the whole herd. Now that she saved Rowdy Girl and Houdini and the rest of the herd, I think it was the best thing she ever did. Rowdy Girl has rescued a host of animals. We are now home to many cows, pigs, chickens, horses, ducks, turkeys, and a goat. All of them are well taken care of. They're given full medical care and they're free to roam. And they now live out their lives in peace here. Running an animal sanctuary is a very big job. There's so many elements that are always moving at once. 
You need roads, you need infrastructure, fences, food, you need hay, vet care, the list goes on and on. Without volunteers and donations, we could never make it. Although it isn't easy running an animal sanctuary, it's all worth it when I see folks leave here with an understanding that animals also feel pain and sadness. They feel grief, happiness, and genuine affection, just like we do. And I know that after meeting Rowdy Girl and the rest of the bunch, folks are gonna leave here with a big heart for the animals and treat them with greater kindness. I believe that a compassionate world is really easy if we'll just open our hearts. I've always kind of been an activist for the animals, for the environment, and for the people as well. And just hearing about everything that animal agriculture does to everyone, it, it was just so heartbreaking for me. So then when I went vegan, it's really the least I can do for this planet. It's just knowing that animal agriculture is being subsidized and being paid for by our government. It's just crazy how our government is paying for everything to happen. Our farm started in 1873. I'm the fifth generation. The kids live in a house built by their great-great-grandfather, and they won't be milking cows. When the time comes, um, it's going to almost certainly end with me. Dairy industry is on its way out. It's just the reality. It's, it's on its way out. For hazelnuts, I was looking for uh, pretty much any uh, perennial crop, preferably a nut crop I was looking for, and um, hazelnuts is the one that can fit our climate. I think once the options are out there, people just tend to use them. The things are changing, and you got to change with it, or um, you're going to be left behind. I'm 14. Our tax dollars, taxpayers are spending, are wasting billions of their dollars on protecting this industry, and we have no say over it, but our government does. And our government is allowing all of this to happen with the bailouts and subsidies, and the Farm Bill is actually a piece of U.S. legislation that mainly allows the subsidization of animal agriculture to continue. Well, at first I heard about it from Vegan Batgirl on Instagram. She is also a lobbyist for the plant agriculture industry against animal agriculture subsidies. I first heard about it from a video she made, and then I looked into it further by reading a book called Meatonomics. Did you ever think about why you choose some foods over others? We make dozens of food choices each week based on our taste, income, nutritional beliefs, and other factors. But what if the real reasons for our eating choices were not as simple as we think? 
In fact, new information shows consumers have in many ways lost the ability to make informed, independent decisions about what to eat. Instead, these decisions are largely made for us by big producers of meat and dairy who control and manipulate our buying choices in a number of ways. One way these animal food producers make us buy their goods is through aggressive and misleading messaging, often backed by the U.S. government. Producers have also passed more than a hundred laws that make it hard to investigate, criticize, or sue them. Even worse, these laws totally eliminate all anti-cruelty protection for farm animals. Producers also control us by keeping meat and dairy prices artificially low, which makes us buy more. In fact, producer behavior has driven animal foods retail prices lower and lower on an inflation-adjusted basis over the last 75 years. Factory farmers keep prices low by dumping over $400 billion of production costs on society each year. That means a $5 Big Mac really costs $13. What can we do about all of this? For starters, we can eat less meat and dairy, or better yet, give them up completely. Besides the benefits for the environment, the economy, and the animals, eating less animal foods can yield wonderful benefits to your health. For more information and more solutions, get the book Metanomics. Visit metanomics.com or find it online wherever books are sold. And then from there, I co-founded the Youth Agricultural Revolution. And everyone here, we are activists. We are volunteers with the Youth Agricultural Revolution. I'm the co-founder. Her name is Eileen Keister. She co-founded it with me. She lives in Oregon. From Animal Agriculture or um, Agriculture. Hi everyone, so I actually went vegan because I realized the cruelty in the dairy industry. I was vegetarian originally, and once I realized how cruel the animal agriculture industry was, I went vegan. And then I realized that the government actually subsidizes the animal agriculture industry, which makes it fail-proof. And that's basically why we're here and raising awareness about this issue. I'm vegan because vegan is the ethical way of living and you can't just not be vegan and be fine with it. And when I went vegan, I did protests and I volunteered at certain animal sanctuaries and that made me who I am today. I was already vegetarian and I had already gone to a couple protests and I realized that vegan is even better than vegetarian and that vegan is better for the world and it's the ethical way of living. Because animals are kept in cages and chickens are kept in cages, in small cages for their eggs and cows are also kept in small cages for their milk and if we can put a stop to that then we should. I went vegan for both the animals and the environment because eating animals it's the number one cause of global warming and also when I learned how the animals are treated in the industry, I just, there's no way that you can eat animals and not feel guilty about it. And I actually stopped eating meat 10 years ago and I just became vegan about a little less than a year ago because the dairy industry and also the egg industry, animals are being tortured in those industries as well. Like, even if you think, oh, it's not actually killing the animals, they are. And also, it directly relates to the meat industry as well. So supporting dairy and eggs is supporting the meat industry. I'm 17 years old. I think this is awesome, actually. You got three youth, the future animal liberation, out in the largest, most famous park in the world, protesting basically by themselves, brave enough to stand up for what they believe is right. This is awesome stuff. This is inspiring stuff. This is what people should aspire to be like. Stand up for what you believe in. Great job, Youth Ag Revolution. I am honored to be here today in Central Park in New York City with my daughter being led by Erin Ursoy of this incredible organization that has taught me so much. I've been an animal activist most of my life, a vegan for coming up on my fifth anniversary. I turned vegan because of my daughter, one of the ones standing behind the, the sign. When she was seven, she went vegan. And despite being an animal activist, I hadn't been able to make that jump until she did. I went, so she brought us the whole family to veganism. She is now 12. 
I have dragged both of my daughters to many protests over the years and always wondered if I was imposing my opinion on them too much. I, I did was concerned about that. I always told them they need to ask their questions and make their own decisions. But I absolutely love that both of my daughters have joined with Erin in this organization. And right now they are protesting government subsidies for animal agriculture or agritorture. It's something I wasn't even aware of until these kids taught me that my money is going to subsidize these torturous industries that shouldn't exist in the first place. And now that they are losing business as they should because most of the country and the world's eyes are opening and understanding that we have healthier, kinder options for dairy and meat alternatives and eggs, oh, eggs. But the government is still subsidizing them. So they're still abusing these animals as much as ever. And these kids are standing up and telling the government to stop using their parents' money to subsidize these horrific, unnecessary industries. And I'm, I'm thrilled and so impressed with these kids for running this and so glad that my kids are doing this on their own and it's not my, inf well, a bit of my influence, but their decision to be here today. Well, I've been plant-based for five years and vegan for four. I'm here because I think the youth are who are going to be leading this movement and the people who really can inspire everyone. I think that if you are young and you can get momentum going, you can really inspire every generation. I think that the youth of today are really leading the things that are most important in society right now, and this is animal agriculture, and getting rid of it is obviously one of those things. It's destroying the planet. I think we've reached a sort of level collectively where we have the capacity to be more compassionate, and it's just a choice that we can make. So why not make that choice? In terms of health, our country is really suffering with obesity and heart problems and is the only known way to reverse heart issues without medication. So I think all around, it's just the way to go. And I think it's the direction we are going in, but more people need to wake up to it. This is like getting a little nitpicky, but I think when I first went vegan, it was just for the environment and there wasn't an ethical component for the animals. And I'm still an environmental activist as much as an animal rights activist. So I just, I don't think I understood the ethical component and still bought new leather and had cheese once in a while when I was plant-based. It was, I was predominantly plant-based, but like once in a while I'd have something that wasn't, that had animal products in it. And then when I made the ethical connection, I completely lost interest. Even if I wanted that, it just wasn't an option. I stopped seeing those things as food and other animal products as commodities. I think that might be the distinction. I do also think that the more people doing their best is optimal. Like I think that as much as we're all making steps in the right direction and not shaming each other for being perfect vegans, that's better than turning into a religion. My mom gave me a lot of her clothes from the 80s and 90s that she doesn't want to or can't wear anymore. Instead of throwing it out, leather boots or leather, leather shoes, they, they're still perfectly fine. And I think it's more wasteful and it takes up more resources to buy new than to inherit what your parents have given you or your siblings or whatever. It's not even paying for it. So I sort of feel that as long as you're not paying for torture and destruction and if you're not furthering unsustainable businesses environmentally, then it's a conversation to have. I think a lot of vegans, and I think it's totally valid, would say, well, you shouldn't be normalizing leather. I do agree with that. But a lot of the times vegan wear fake leather, that's so believable. I'm like, well, I don't think either of us are better than the other. But I think both ways are conversation starters. So whenever a non-vegan tries to point, poke a hole in that, if you're vegan and you're wearing fake leather and you've gotten rid of everything that could be an animal product in your closet, it's still a conversation. And if someone comes to me as a vegan, and I'm wearing my mom's old shoes, like boots from the 80s that are made of leather, I can say, I didn't actually buy them. They're just given to me. My mom bought them 40 years ago. I would never wear a fur coat or fur trim or for anything. I think the second you know the conditions of an animal who's wearing fur, it's a big turnoff. I understand that it might be hypocritical for me to wear old leather, but it's functional. I don't think fur is functional in any way. That's my distinction, but I, I understand if, if vegans don't like my wearing old leather. I get it. I'm trying to phase it out. So as soon as those shoes die, I'm gonna buy vegan shoes. It's very recognizable as real fur. And even if you're wearing fake fur, it's often made with real fur and people don't know that. I feel like fur is a very slippery slope and it's not functional. Like there's no point. You can wear a hat like you're wearing. You can wear a scarf around your head. We're not indigenous people. 
we're not living in conditions where we have we have so many other options where we live and in our socioeconomic bracket that there's really no excuse to pretend to be an Inuit. <laughs> Sorry. I feel like the message with vegans most of the time, we're not speaking to those who can't be vegan, we're speaking to those who can be vegan to make that choice. I'm a climate justice activist and I also work in animal justice. I have been plant-based for about 15 years. I don't identify as vegan. And part of the reason is absolutely, I'm plant-based for ethical and environmental reasons, though I find it difficult to adhere to any way of living perfectly. I struggle with the notions around purity. Like for example, when I'm living with other people who are plant-based and vegan, I find it easier to fully adhere. Whereas, you know, I've done a lot of work in documentary, traveling. I lived in Mongolia for a year when I was 25. I've worked with indigenous communities. For example, like when someone's preparing food for me, if they're, are particular, like if, you know, in particular eggs or dairy, I find it difficult to reject food that's been prepared. So I think this is kind of more of a Buddhist mindset on a plant-based diet. Here lies the trillions of animals unrecognized and uncared for, exploited and murdered. We saw them, we tried, but you ignored. Here lies humanity. We continued our path with ignorance and greed and destroyed our planet to the point of no return. We could have saved them all, but your eyes were covered by money so you could not see the suffering of our planet. Your ears were filled with coins so you could not hear the screams of the non-human animals as a knife was callously jabbed into their throat and left to bleed on the ground. Morgan will be passing out flowers to everyone. Please take one flower per person and you may come up and place a flower on one of the graves. of intersectional activism to achieve animal liberation. I would like to share some information that we should all know about the subsidies and bailouts that our government has given animal agriculture each year. Each year, American taxpayers subsidize the animal food system with $38 billion, according to the USDA Agriculture Marketing Service. According to David Robinson Simon in a book, Meatonomics, for every $1 of product they sell, the food system imposes almost $2 in hidden costs on taxpayers. This means that if you buy a pound of meat for $4, they actually make $8. But plant-based food products receive such a little amount of subsidies that a death patty can be a dollar, but a cup of strawberries can set you back $7. Not only this, but the only farmers being subsidized are the multi-billion dollar corporations like JBS. Subsidies don't even help small farmers. This past May, the fish killing industry received a $300 million federal bailout. This August, the federal government allotted a $14 billion bailout to animal agriculture. And this past April, the federal government gave a $16 billion bailout to farmers associated with large corporations. And these are only bailouts from 2020. While there are 815 million people starving, 
Our government has a stockpile of 1.5 billion pounds of cheese rotting in government warehouses. Animal agriculture is killing our planet, causing zoonotic diseases and slaughtering animals by the second. The world is getting hotter and our government is stoking the flames. Our government cl claims to care about everyone, yet they continue to proudly fund what is arguably the most destructive industry in the world. Our right to remain cruelty-free is being ripped away from us, and we will not stand for it. We, the people of this planet, declare an agricultural revolution. We demand the government to stop subsidizing and bailing out animal agriculture. We demand justice for the animals, the people, and the planet. It is our responsibility to bring these injustices to light and continue to collectively pressure our government officials to end bailouts for a better future for all. Thank you. Hello, I'm Liam. I'm 18 years old and I'm originally from Illinois, but I moved to New York a few weeks ago for college. I've been a vegan for three and a half years now and I was a vegetarian for four years before that. What really got me to switch to vegan instead of just vegetarian was the ocean. I went snorkeling for the first time and I saw all the fish and I thought I really have to do something for the animals. That was when the activist mindset kicked in and I looked more into the animal agriculture industry and the fish farming industries and I decided I had to give up milk, I had to give up eggs, and I had to fight for the animals to make sure that animals have rights and liberation. What do we want? Food justice! When do we want?